how to determine the value of a property, also known as ARV. In this video, I will show you step-by-step -step how to easily do it online for free. Stand by, let's get it. Hello guys, this is Ty K, The Flip Man. How to determine the value of a property, also known as ARV, which simply means after repair value, or in my definition, what will the house appraise for in excellent condition. In this video, I will show you how to do this using Zillow. I will share my screen to accomplish this. Before I get started, make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel, turn on the notifications, so you are alerted whenever I upload new videos, or when I go live on YouTube. Also, don't forget our Thursday night flippinars at 7 p.m. Eastern. To sign up, to join, go to flippinar.com. Stand by for this video tip. How do you know if you have a deal or not? It all starts with knowing what the house will appraise for in excellent condition. Hello, this is Ty K, the Flip Man. And in this particular video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to simply use the most powerful tool to Google a real estate as far as uh, residential or houses on the internet, which is Zillow. Uh, realtors used to talk bad about it. I'm sure they don't. Just look at Zillow and you see how they're advertised all over it. I don't care what market you're in. Okay, uh, after repair value, which is ARV, don't get confused with the repair part of that phrase. It simply means what will the house appraise for in excellent condition. Now, there are going to be three ways that I'm going to show you how to determine that value. And that's the starting point. And you can use that as a simple formula you can use to accomplish knowing if you have a potential deal or not. So you don't waste time. Now, the formula, formula itself is not an in all. It's just more of a, a tool to prevent you from make, wasting time on properties that have no chance of being a deal, in my opinion. Uh, and that formula is ARV times 70%. You can use 60, but times 70% minus estimated repairs, which uh, that's a totally different video in itself, uh, minus your fee. And I like to double my fee, my projected fee, to give me some negotiating room, which will give you the actual offer that you should make. Some call it a uh, maximum allowed offer. Um, but in reality, I like to even offer less than that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start with you're going to you're evaluating the property and you really don't even have to put the full address of the property in. What I would recommend you do is, is just put the name of the street without the house number and maybe the zip code. So um, I've already done a little research here. So the one that I'm going to target here is um, Sam Drive. And. As you see here, uh, Zillow automatically pulls up uh, properties uh, based on the li listing type selection, which everything is, is, it is selected except for rent recently sold. All right, so the first thing that you're going to do is, is that you're going to uncheck for sale, you're going to uncheck potential listings, and you're going to go down here to recently sold. The other thing is make sure that only houses is selected. Um, unless you're trying to target town halls or manufactured homes or whatever, but make sure this, this houses are selected. All right. The other thing is under, under more, uh, sold in the last 90 days. Now, sometimes you may have to go, uh, six months. If you can get enough data with 30 days, that's even better. You may even have to go up to 12 months. Remember Zillow is only pulling information that's made available by the county of the pro where the property is located that you're targeting. So understand it's only going to be as accurate as that information, how current that information is. So now if you're in a market or in an area of your market where there are not a lot of transactions, your data is going to be limited. So I chose an area where there's a lot of transactions that are going on for the most part. So just keep that in mind. Also, don't get caught up in the prices of the houses that we may look at here. Um, deals are deals. Um, you can see houses in my market for five grand, you know, or whatever, you know, I'll, and obviously anything higher than that, but in other markets, that's not even possible. But if you're in Southern California 
or even New York City or whatever, you would say, well, the houses are too high here, but you're comparing where I may live or someone else may live. But the only reason the houses can go for what they're going for in those markets is because people can afford them. But the same reasons why someone would be uh, motivated to sell cheap in Birmingham, Alabama, would be the same reason someone would be motivated to sell in New York City. Divorce, death, loss of income, relocation, too many repairs, tired of being a landlord, medical bills, kids going off to college. So all of those create motivated reasons to be motivated. So your job as a wholesaler is to let people know that you exist. But that's not what this video is about. But I wanted to try to throw that in so you can get on a general understanding of, you know, what you're doing here. So, all right. So now before I get into that, if you're on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications so you are alerted whenever I upload new videos and when I go live on YouTube, especially on Thursday nights at 7 p.m., you can join my live flippinars, which are webinars, but I call them flippinars, where you can ask your questions live to me. I'll answer uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, 6 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Mountain, 4 p.m. on the West Coast. All right, so you can access that through flippinard.com. If you're on Facebook, make sure that you share, comment, like, and tap watch more if you would like to see or take advantage of my 200 plus videos I have like this where I tell you everything you need to know about wholesaling houses without using your cash or credit. So on to this video tutorial. I've shown what you do to get to this actual point. All right, so what I'm going to do here is, there, as I said, there are three ways that we're going to show you how to uh, evaluate uh, properties to come up with an ARV. The first one is we're going to base it on square footage of the property and what it what is sold for per square feet. So, all right, so just naturally, I'm going to look at the higher prices that are consistent with each other. We got 135, we have 130, we have 112, we have 122, and we have 123. So I'm going to probably stick with those there. I may uh, do this 105 just to see. All right, so we'll start with the 135. All right, so if I tap on that, it Zillow pulls it up. And so you see it sold for 128.53. Uh, and uh, it's a four bedroom, two bath, 1,686 square feet. So um i'm sorry it sold for 134.9 i said 128 it sold for 134.9 is what it actually sold for okay so what you do is now this may change with zillow remember i'm doing this on a laptop so it won't look like this on your smartphone but you still can maneuver through and get the same information it won't look like this on a smartphone or a tablet so and this may change over time with zillow they're going to always be changing their platform but you still should be able to gain uh access to the same information so what I do is I scroll down and see more facts and features. And boom, what I'm looking for is this right here, last sale price per square feet. And so boom, so it's $80. So I have a little notepad here. I'm sorry, I'm gonna go here to the bigger window. All right, so I'm gonna put 80 here. So we're gonna do the one for 130. See what it sold for uh, per square feet is 1476. And then we go down here. It sold for $88 per square feet. So we'll go back here. All right. So we go to the next one. Uh, what's the next highest? Uh, so we're going to look at the one that's 123. Sold for 122.5 is 1950 square feet. So it's sixty-three dollars. So it's a little drop there. All right. So we're gonna add it here. That was one twenty-two actually. So we're gonna to go to the one that says one twenty-three. It shows one twenty-three exactly, and it was twenty-four fifty square feet. So last sold fifty dollars. So we're going to add that to the list. All right. And let's go back. 
All right, so we got 123, we got 115 right here. And one thing I want to show you before I go to this 115, this is a main street right here, right? It's Brewster Road. Just by crossing over, you can possibly see a price drop or a price increase, or it may be consistent. I just want to make you aware that that's a possibility. So where were we uh, on the 115? All right, it's 2132 square feet and sold for $115,000. So the per square feet is uh, $54. All right, and see, all of this was is within a mile of each other. I'm very familiar with they've done a lot of deals over, over here over the years. So, all right, and let's look at one more over here. Okay, we're gonna go a little farther over in this direction. All right, now it's this house sold for one thirty. It's only uh, fourteen sixty eight. All right, and so what we got here per square feet? So eighty nine. All righty, so that I think that's enough. All right, so boom. So let me blow these up so you can see them. Do 24 here. All right, so we got 89. I like that. We got 88 and 80. Now you got the 63, 15, and 54. I'm looking for consistency at the highest point. This is some really good data here. So we know that we could probably get an appraisal on a house for 89, 88, or 80. So whatever, which are, any of those numbers you want to use, roll with it. So I'll probably just start with the 80, use the 80 just to be conservative. So if I was going to use $80 a square foot feet and I was evaluating the house, we'll just say it was 1,500 square feet. So we'll just say the house was 1,500 square feet. I'm just going to do the quick math here. So what would your after repair value be on this particular property? Your after repair value on this property would be uh, $120,000. You could comfortably say that would be your ARV. All right. So, all righty. So now you have the ARV. And uh, again, the formula is the formula. I'll go ahead and do that for you since I'm here. So it's ARV. So you see what that is. Uh, times 70% minus repairs minus your fee times two. So boom. So there you go. That's, that's the actual formula to uh, determine ARV. So you would plug in the 120,000 times 70%. Um, we can just go ahead and do it. I'll do that for you guys. So it's 120,000 times the 70%. You can use 60 if you want to, but just being a little con conservative here. So that's 70%. We're going to say, um, we'll go ahead and do the total on that and then we'll come back. Um, so 70% is 84,000. Minus repairs, so 84,000 minus repairs. So we'll just guess. You you don't know when you're talking to someone. So you can just throw out a number if you want. You can ask them what they think of the condition of the property and just use 15,000 just as a number because you still won't know. But this again, this is only to prevent you from wasting time. So it may be a lot more, may not be a lot less, but we'll just use 15,000 as the number. So we know that that is 69,000. All right. So say you say you want to make 10 grand on this property. All right. So 69,000. You say, remember, we're going to time that times two. So 69,000 and your, your fee times two would be 20,000 minus 20,000 your fee. So that leaves $49,000. So that's your what they call maximum allowed offer. I just like to call it offer, <laughs> but um, that would be it is the $49,000. So in reality, you know, again, that's a different video in itself. I'm going to probably offer a lot less than that in reality. So um, I'll probably would make an offer of 30 if they reject it. My follow-up question is, well, how close can you come to that amount? 
Remember, your objective is always to get the seller's least amount, and then you figure out if it works for you or not. All right, so and then you go there and view the property and so on. But that, again, that's a different video in itself. All right, so that's method number one. All right, all right. Method number two is is that I'm going to leave this property up here. I think I can roll with it. Let me let me choose another one that's sort of closer over here. Um, I'm going to roll with this one. Yeah, sixteen hundred. That's a good good size house over there. All right, so I'm pulling up this house here. Here's the address, and I'm going to expand. Again, this is on your laptop, so it's going to be a little different on your smartphone. All right, so what you do here, you have the information here, but I'm going to scroll down to the right. Again, Zillow will change over time, so this platform will be different. And what I'm looking for is nearby similar sales. All right, so I'm going to right-click on this and open a new window. All right, so it pulls up this property again. has a little map here. And I'm going to go down to the bottom. And you see all these recently sold. I'm going to go down to the bottom. All right. And so, boom. So, 139, 139, uh, 134. You can see there that it says it's a little smaller by uh, minus the 201 square feet. Um, 130, 134. And all these houses are actually smaller, 129. And they're, they're very close, 124. So even though uh, Zillow is offering 128, uh, someone did a really good rehab job on this property, they could get that. They could get an appraisal for that. I don't know if someone will buy it at that, but they can get an appraisal for this right here. Um, you got you got a couple, you know, three comps in the 130. There are four. Uh, in, well, I'm sorry, five in the 130. So you could easily get that. So that's another way. So. Um, so what I would do is do I'd be a little bit more conservative. I would just roll with the number that Zillow is offering here, the 128. All right. So now the first one, remember, we did it on square feet, square feet, and I did it based on the square feet, and I went with the lower number of 80, you know, times the square feet of 1,500. So it was a 120. So again, you're just backing up your data. There's no exact number. Remember, if you send three appraisers out to a property, um, you they're going to come back with three different numbers because it's a, an opinion based on the data that they will all use, but they're going to have their own uh, couple of things that make it a little different, but they, the numbers should be close to each other, you know? So, um, so you, that's why it's not a big deal to have just an exact number. You just need a ballpark number so you can work your formula. So I would just roll with the 128 that Zillow is showing here because the data down here shows me enough information that I need. And what I'm really, I didn't say this, but what I'm always looking for is the highest three comps, whether it's uh, measured by the square feet or doing it this way, that are consistent with each other. See, I could easily go with this 139, 139, 134 or whatever, but I'll just roll with the 128 for the sake of me negotiating. Uh, that's an additional 10 grand. So I want you know, I can be a little bit more comfortable if I were going to work the formula, which I don't really need a formula. I just I just know what to offer. You know, after you do it so long, the formula won't even be an issue for you anymore. You'll just know what to offer or whatever after you evaluated, waited enough properties and done enough deals. So so boom. So that works. I pulled up a different property in a different area. All right. So the third way, what I did is I went to a different area because I could pull a little bit more data uh, on it. So. The third thing is just you just Google the address. And I tell my students all the time, and they know I'll send them instructions. We don't even need to discuss anything until you understand how that ARV. You know, they can be all excited or whatever. We need to know that ARV before we even get into anything. All right, what will it appraise for in excellent condition? So you Google the address and let Google do the work for you. Now, this won't always be the situation where it's going to pull up all of these sites. But the only thing you're really doing is comparing all those, those sites. Uh, that are similar to Zillow, uh, and it'll, Google will actually do that for you as far as populating those if the information is available. So with this being said, here's the address, all right? As you see here, here's Zillow's, here's Movado, here's Trulia. Uh, don't use uh, uh, Spokio, I guess it's pronounced. Home Snap, I like that. Uh, Redfin, um, and then down here, Realtor, it, I'm sorry, um, uh, Realtrack, it doesn't pull the actual uh, the address that we're targeting. It pulls another address, but that's fine because it's it's virtually next door. Now, um, let me see if Realtor is here also. Okay, and then Realtor does the same thing. 
it, it doesn't pull the actual um, uh, address. It pulls the um, address net across the street. Okay, but that's fine again. All right, so so I already pulled these up so it wouldn't take so long for these to populate or whatever. All right, so Zillow is saying it's 259. Okay. Now, Troy is a little different and it's just not going to pop out. I think on the, uh, sometimes on the mobile version it will, but you have to sort of search for it on, on, um, on, uh, on Troya. All right. But Troya, um, is giving you a, um, uh, an estimated value of 226 right here. Median sale price for homes in the area 226. All right. And then realtor.com is saying 226. Movado is saying 225. Homesnap is saying 230. It gives you a range between 190 to 269. Now Redfin goes off the deep end. They say 318. Homes goes off the deep end and says 168. All right. And then Realtor goes off the deep end and says with the property across the street. Um, well, it's a, it's a few doors down says uh 316 okay so the 316 the 168 and the 318 we're throwing those out so the 259 the uh 226 the 226 again uh, that's realtor across the street i put up two properties with realtor my bottle says 225 and home says 230 so it's, it's obvious there guys you have a consistency in the 220s you have a 230 259 Again, you throw out the higher and the lower number. So I'm looking for that consistency for between three sites. So I would easily say this probably 225, 230, 235. I'd be comfortable with all of that. And then you go back to your formula again. So this is pretty much it. I've given you three ways. A lot of people say you contact a realtor and see if they'll work with you and send you over some comms. Guys, it's the same information that they're pulling. You know, And sometimes there can be a little bit better depending on the market. But for the most part, this is the same information. This is public information coming from the same source, which is the courthouse, which is recording transactions. So, um, and then a lot of realtors are not going to do that long term for you unless you just have a really, really good relationship with them because it make a take them some time to get some results from it with money in their pocket. But again, guys, we use technology to uh we don't we don't need that. You know what I'm saying? You can do it yourself. And so you once you understand what you're looking for, and uh, hopefully this video was able to provide that for you, then boom, there you go. So this is how you determine uh, your ARV, uh, what will the house appraise for, and then obviously you go back here to the formula, which um, I'm showing you right here. I'm going to highlight it and turn it blue just to make sure you can distinguish. And that's your formula right there, and uh, you can roll with it. So uh, that's that's part. That's the biggest part of it. You know, Without knowing what the house will appraise for, at excellent condition, a price of seller give you means nothing, you know, without knowing that. Because you have to know what uh, what's the advantage or what's the benefit to your cash buyer, which is going to be the source that provides your funds, what's going to be the benefit to them. So, again, I hope this video helps. Make sure you share this video if you're on Facebook. Comment, like it, tap watch more to access more videos like this. If you're on YouTube, remember, subscribe to the channel so you, and turn on the notifications so you are alerted whenever new videos are uploaded. And when I go live on YouTube, especially on my Thursday night flipping ours where I'll be live on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Uh, but make sure you turn on the notifications. And I'll see you on the flip side.